Hi everybody, Captain Al here with your training tips designed to help make you a better flight simmer, pilot, or aviation enthusiast. Take a seat, strap in, let's stow the HUD and see what is on the horizon for today. Today we're going to look at the top 10 flight deck differences between the Boeing 747-8 compared with the Boeing 747-400 jet aircraft. We will look at the top 10 interior features of the latest model of the iconic Queen of the Skies Boeing jet. For more detailed information, subscribe to my YouTube channel for future updates or head on over to subsonicflighttraining.com for training tips, tutorial briefings, all free of charge on the Boeing 747-400. Let's start with the top 10 interior flight deck differences between the Dash 8 and the Dash 400 of the Boeing 747 series aircraft. Number 1. The Electronic Checklist, ECL. The Electronic Checklist, or ECL, allows the crew to quickly and efficiently display normal and non-normal checklists. Pilots interact with the checklist by using a rotary cursor control located on the control stand where the trim indicator used to be on the 747-400. The crew has the ability to reset checklists, override checklists, override individual items, and display notes. Some system items can be sensed by the aircraft to be true and are checked off automatically, while others must be verified and checked off manually by the crew. Number two, the electronic flight bag, EFB. The electronic flight bag, or EFB, allows the crew to display approach charts electronically by creating chart clips, calculate performance for takeoff and landing through an onboard performance tool, or OPT, check that databases are current, display useful pilot utilities, and reference airline-specific flight documents. Logbook and flight manuals are referenced through a documents folder. Each pilot has an EFB that has hard and soft keys along with a touch-sensitive screen. Number three, the Vertical Situation Display, VSD. The Vertical Situation Display, or VSD, is shown on the bottom 35% the navigation display, ND. It shows a vertical profile of your flight path projected out to a selected range and is as if you were looking at your aircraft from a right profile view. Use of the VSD is recommended by at least one pilot during takeoff, departure, approach, and landing. The VSD shows waypoints and altitude constraints, terrain mapping, vertical approach profile, runway and approach gates, and the en route swath portion of the jet's flight path. Number four, the airport moving map display, AMM. The airport moving map display, or AMM, is shown on the navigation display when you have airport selected on the display select panel and you're in a range of five miles or less. The moving map assists in situational awareness during taxi. It can display runways, taxiways, airport signage, buildings, hold lines, water, and other ground-related symbols. It does not relieve the pilots from using taxi charts during taxiing. Number five, the multifunction displays, MFDs. There are three multifunction displays, or MFDs. The captain's inboard display unit, or DU, the first officer's inboard display unit, and the lower display unit. Any one of the displays can be used to show page information selected on the display select panel, or DSP. The MFDs allow for flexibility in where the pilots want information displayed. Number six. The Ram Air Turbine, or RAT. For the first time, the 747 has a Ram Air Turbine, or a RAT. 
The RAT is designed to automatically deploy if three or more engines fail. The RAT is a hydraulic motor pump assembly with a small propeller that allows ram air to spin it. The resultant force is translated into power and generates a motor that powers either electrics, hydraulics, or both. The RAT is located on the right inboard wing route and is outlined in red on the exterior to warn in case it would inadvertently fall and deploy. In the 747-8, it supplies hydraulic power only to system number three to power the flight controls. The RAT does not provide any electrical power on the 747-8. RATs are normally found on two engine jet transports, but now can also be found on the 747-8. Number seven. The start panel. The start panel on the 747-8 has been simplified by removing the standby ignition panel, continuous ignition switch, auto ignition selector panel, and auto start switch that were all under the start switches on the 747-400. The aircraft now is a full-time auto start system and there is no manual start. When pulling the start switches and bringing the fuel control switches to run, there are no lights inside the start switches like on the 747-400. Number eight, aisle stand panels, radio tuning panels, weather radar, and transponder. The radio tuning panels or RTPs, weather radar panel, and transponder panel all now have digital push buttons replacing rotary switches of the 747-400. This allows for faster tuning of the radios, quicker selection of weather radar modes, and easier selection of transponder codes compared with the 747-400. Number nine, trim indication, gear handle, fuel reserve tanks. The trim indicator has been moved to primary ICAS and is now electronically displayed. The gear handle is much smaller now with no off position, just up and down positions and is a fly-by-wire system. It is really just an electric switch that sends a signal to extend or retract the landing gear. The gear is depressurized automatically when the gear is retracted. Reserve fuel tanks are now main tanks 1 and 4 instead of main tanks 2 and 3 like they were in the Dash 400. And verification of tank to engine is done differently now when referencing the synoptic on the 747-8 compared with the 747-400. Number 10, pack switches and alternate ventilation system. Pack switches are now push-button switches replacing the rotary switches of the 747-400. There is now an alternate ventilation system, or AVS, that can be used in the event all three packs are inoperative, or if the airplane is not pressurized. The switch allows ram air to be directed into the flight deck as an alternate source of air in the event of pack or pressurization problems. Of course, there are many more differences between the two Boeing jets. Both the 747-8 and the 747-400 are majestic reminders of a time when air travel came of age. Want to learn to fly a 747? Well, fly on over to subsonicflighttraining.com and click the plus sign on the right side of the home page and then check out both FSX Steam Edition and iFly 747-400. For more detailed information on the 747, check out training tips briefings on flying the 747-400. As soon as PMDG comes out with the 747-8, there will be added briefings on that aircraft. So make sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So let's lower the HUD and go flying. Until next time, keep the blue side up. Captain Al, out.